Greetings, my fellow friend, low and thinkers. This is L03 News Podcast. My name is Craig, transmitting from the beautiful swampy mangrove, South Florida. And today's date is Sunday, May 27th, 2018. Yes, it's been raining consistently in this past week, on and off. And of course, the, the um, squalls of subtropical storm Alberto. Also, hurricane season started early this year. That's how it goes. It hasn't has happened quite a few times since living down here in 1977. It's nothing new at all. But um, yeah, so some interesting things are happening here and there. Some check, doing a little checkpoint Charlie along Miami Beach, checking on if people are unsafe to speed, DUIs, and all that good stuff. So folks, whatever you do. Be careful out there, and you don't have to. You don't have to submit your license, registration, and proof of insurance. FloridaDUI.org will tell you all about it, and going by the states, including Florida. So keep. You want to? Don't complain. Fight back, because those are legitimate. It's legit and legal. Or the words legal. I know I'm tongue-tied here, talking too much at times. Yeah. So another cool thing that happened. This past weekend, or Friday, <clears throat> oops, wrong channel, beep, <laughs> right there, John Morgan wins smoke, pleased to hear about that, it was ruled on un- unconstitutional grounds, I did post that on um, <coughs> Facebook, Twitter, and Google+, Plus under FloridaMarijuana.net, so check it out, and it's good because now, Mer- the medical marijuana ordeal can really be ironed out. It should have been handled a long time ago. But you got remember you got these politicians, these bend over bobs, these pathetic lobbyists, and they put the fear factor like Jeff Sessions is gonna raid our state. Right there they officially breached their oath of office. You can tell them that directly. I called up one of these knuckleheads, senators last year, he never responded. Why is that? Because the truth really hurts. Speaking of the truth, we're going to be talking about the so-called dimwits of Broward County. And um, what on earth happened here? The dimwits of Broward County. And we're going to have so much fun doing this. One moment. It looks like I goofed up somewhere. Yes, I did. Shoot! Hit when they do this crap on me, you know? Let me see here. Boom. Okay, I got I have a little quick delay here, my friends. That's okay. I got uh, I to do. This one came from the Miami Herald. Come on. Yeah, actually, it's me, Herald. I'll be the first one I'm going to be talking about. No, you don't want to work with me here? Okay. Hold on here. Just, uh... I don't know what to do. Okay, this is what's going to happen. This came from my Herald yesterday, to be exact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Everything's completely frozen on me. Right? Let's see. Yep. So. Let's talk about this here. Okay. Whoop. 
Okay, well, now I got everything handled here. It says here, this is from um, the Miami Herald. Came out yesterday around 11.40 a.m. It's entitled, Four Years Later, Alleged Assault by Sheriff Israel Sun Becomes new becomes a New Story. It is by Carol Marvin Miller and Nicholas Nihamas. Nihamas. In the mid in the mid twenty fourth in mid February twenty fourteen, two seventeen year old Marjorie Stoneman Douglas students assaulted a fourteen year old baseball player near the high school stadium. They kicked the boy, the police report said, held him to the ground and simulated a sexual assault through the teen's clothing with the baseball bat. Which was Brown Sheriff Scott Scott Israel's son, Brett Israel, according to the incident report. When the attack was reported to authorities, Brett Israel and Anthony Broderick were not arrested. They were suspended from the Parkland High School for three days based on the school's con conclusion that they had committed a simple battery and that the suspension was consistent with the Broward School District's discipline matrix. The uh, victim's parents approved the sanction saying suspension was appropriate punishment and that any law enforcement action would have put their son through unnecessary trauma. So that's an interesting scenario on that. And but the Nicholas Cruz took an assault rifle to the school on February 14th of this year and killed 17 students and educators wounding 17 others. We can say allegedly for the time being, even though he said he may admit it, but it's got to be proven in the court of law, and I say that out of respect. The 24, 2014 incident, long since forgotten, has emerged anew as copies of the report have circulated among parents and reporters for weeks. As a result, the incident has been published first on the right-leaning news, news sites and then on more traditional outlets. Parents of some of the 14, February 14 victims understandably upset with the bar sheriff's office response to the massacre. At least one Deputy failed to enter the school, even as crews pumped it, pumped bullets into into mortality, wounded teens, and demanded Israel and his son be held accountable. Along with the deputy who wrote up the report on the assault, he is Scott Peterson, the same deputy who quit in disgrace after it was learned he never went inside the school to confront the shooter. The uh, school office, the sheriff's office, is investigating how the report got. A week ago, a hard right website gave repugnant reference to the four-year-old report on the assault and pointing out that the incident the in-school deputy asked did the Briar Sheriff's County Sheriff's Israel Israel's son get special treatment after brutal school crime the website then answered his own question it sure looks like that way it reminds me with the Rundle twins Kathy, Kathy Nance Rundle the district attorney from Miami-Dade County Florida the, the, their twin sons can do whatever they want. Just look up the Rundle twins. You pee. It's pretty interesting. You know, a little bit glamorous. Yeah. So I'll continue on here. WPLG Local 10 investigative reporter Bob Norman contacted the parents of several Cruz vic Cruz's victims and reported that they are demanding an investigation into the 2014 battery. Now retired resource officer Peterson failed to do his job that day. Parents told the reporter just as he failed four years later with far more serious consequences. So it's like saying soft, soft people are soft targets, right? Scott Peterson failed to do his job again. Fred Guttenberg, father of the slain student Jamie Guttenberg, told Norman. It's just another example of a bad crime and somebody not being held accountable. It's kind of interesting, the intersection of the same people. A second right-leaning website, Town Hall, citing Norman's report, said Brett Israel partook in what appeared to be sexual assault. That's the era. Town Hall believes it is time for Scott Israel to resign. What is going on with this department, it asked. Then on Friday afternoon, news weighed in. Lost in much of the report had been in the views of the victim and his family. In his in, inter, in interviews with the Miami Herald over the past two weeks, now adult man and his mother said the BSO report on the incident was accurate portrayal. Hold on here. Sorry about that. Just these delays. Okay, boom. Yeah, sometimes these things happen, but I'm doing all right. Let me see. Yeah, in the interview that reminded me here over the past two years, two weeks, the adult man and his mother said the BSO report on the incident was accurate, 
trail, portrayal, and that the family decided not to press charges on their own accord. It's insulting for anyone to think I would be silenced or strong arm or too down to pursue that was fair for my child, the mother told the Herald. Still, she, had the, she said the incident was traumatic for her son, who is now thriving in college. We just want to move on, she said. And you know what? I can't condemn her, so like I, I gotta be out of serious out of fairness. Frank Gunnenberg, after talking to the mother, is fine with that. He subsequently wrote on Facebook indicating that he had not been told by the reporter of the family's feelings. But in the current partisan environment, every strategy, every tragedy, can become an opportunity to score political points. Gun control advocates around the country have seized on the park the tragedy to push for legislative solutions. Gun rights supporters pushing back have taken aim at the permissive treatment of youth, youthful lawbreakers, pointing out that crews exhibit a bizarre and threatening behavior for years only to be given numerous second chances. They, they zeroed on a program called Promise, pioneered in Broward and championed by then President Barack Obama, that sought to divert nonviolence, non serious offenders from the state just state juvenile justice system and the potential for further incarceration. Before his actions at the besieged Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School Gannard Gardner him scorned and led to the end of his law enforcement career. Sheriff Deputy Scott Peterson addresses a public meeting. Kelly McBride, a vice president and media ethics professor at St. Petersburg Pointer Institute Journalism Training Center, that there is nothing new about political operatives taking piece of the deeply tragic news and turning them into weapons. The 24-hour news cycle, the deeply polarized political system, and most, most importantly, social media have been like fertilizer on the weed, though. We're in this, we're in, we're, we're in this really interesting place in the evolution of information. McBride said, the police report involving Brent Israel have been an open secret in South Florida journalism for, sir, for South Florida journalism circles for weeks. So, that is really interesting indeed. You know, that's why I always tell folks, hey, how far does this rabbit hole go? When you keep things like this going, it's going to be going to make a burden on the school. It happened in Parkland, of all places. Scott Israel's so-called residential place where he lives, his family, he went to school there. <laughs> Very interesting indeed. So how is the credibility of the Briar school system and course Scott Israel Scott Peterson and all these other folks got to really start looking in here and I continue on here multiple media outlets have looked into the incident spoken with the victim and his family and concluded that the encounter while disturbing had little relevance to what occurred on February 14th of this year almost exactly four years to the day after the stadium assault the Herald is reporting it now because the incident is effectively in the public domain and some parents of the victims remain disturbed how the assault was handled. After the Miami Herald request, requested a report from the BSO, the department released it, and in a strange twist, shoot, man, in a strange twist, what the heck? Released it in a strange twist. The names of the sheriff and the name of the sheriff's son, the fellow assailants, were redacted, while the name of the victim was not. That is the reverse of what most yeah, this thing been hopping around on me here. What the hell? Yep, hold on here. Ah! This was reverse of what most departments do. Underage victims are almost never identified. The victim's mother said BSO's general counsel has told her is investigating why the report was not properly redacted, as well as how another entirely unredacted report was leaked to the media in recent months. In some recent 
to that of the school's district promise program, which led by the sheriffs and school district conservative foes in the aftermath of the massacre. They said Cruz could have been thwarted if he faced harsher discipline earlier in the school's career. Multiple media outlets chose not to write that story after our superintendent Ron Runsey insisted Cruz had never been part of the Promise program, but that was before Miami's public radio affiliate WLRN produced a radio a report contradicting Runsey. And I did talk about that on my show too, my past episodes. You can check it out yourself. The actual site is there. Cruz had indeed been assigned to Promise five years ago through it appears he never actually participated. Run C says district records keeping led him to provide reporters erroneous information, not a desire, not a desire to hide an inconvenient truth. Parker survivors themselves have been far more politically outspoken and active than those who witnessed and escaped previous mass shootings, including organizing a massive rally in the nation's capital. On Friday, some of them staged a die-in protest at various public locations to express anger with the chain's political contributions to a Republican gubernatorial candidate Alan Put- Adam Putnam, who was firmly aligned with the National Rifle Association, Publix an- just announced just an- announced just before the protest that was suspending corp contributions. And you can see this glam boy David Hogg sitting there. They're trespassing. Okay, if he's in his house at two and three in the morning, laying dead, go, we are we are victims of gun control. His parents would have an effing cow, get the police, and throw our asses in jail. So just to let you know, they respected private property. The re- the report was um the report was uh, come on stop here. The police report involving Brett Israel is unclear precisely when the assault took place. It may have been April 4, February 14th, which would have been exactly four years before Cruz entered his former school with a semi-automatic weapon. The freshman told the school officer Peterson that he was bullied by Israel and Broderick as he left baseball practice. He was sitting in the ground near the stadium entrance when one of the boys started to kick him. Broderick grabbed the victim's growing arrows with his hand and then pushed the 14-year-old old baseball bat against his buttocks, the report said. The 14-year-old was fully clothed, attempt to remove any clothing from him during the incident. Israel, the report said, held by the victim by his ankles while Burdick wielded the bat. The police report concluded that the encounter amounted to simple battery under the school system's disciplinary code, and the two older teens were suspended for three days. The school district disciplinary matrix requires no law enforcement action, the report added. The victim's parents were notified regarding to the school's disciplinary action, the report said, and advised them they were satisfied with the result. 14-year-old's mother and those statements said, said those statements were true. She said the assailants later apologized, though she said she would have appreciated hearing from the sheriff, but didn't. Broderick's mother's dispute at Pearson's report was accurate, specifically saying that it is wrong about who brandished the bat. Brett took the bat and started poking him. Claudia Math said the report was reversed. The victim's mother said that was not the case. The Herald sought unsuccessfully to contact Brent Israel through Twitter, where he is active. Stuart Kaplan, the private attorney for Sheriff Israel, said the case was handled appropriately. There was absolutely not one scintilla of preferential treatment given to Brent Israel. Kaplan said what happened is this situation is absolutely consistent with good police work. Kaplan said the incident become, becoming public could have Devastating consequences on Brett Israel's life. Israel attended Florida Atlantic University, according to the Lincoln page. To tar and feather him, because some people think the father is not the leader they thought, he was he's terribly unfair, Kaplan said. Brett Israel is an innocent party in this as well. Okay, well, I don't know about that, but um, we'll just continue on here. Peter Selvin, a professor at Middle School of Journalism at Northwestern University, who worked at the Herald decades ago, called deciding what to with such information is difficult. It's more sensitive because children were involved. The right thing to do is to follow the evidence, see where it leads, and then make a thoughtful judgment of what happened and what the publisher said. It is right to see whether this young man's case was hidden because he has a powerful father. That is a legitimate point of inquiry. 
But if a fair minded examination shows it was not an abuse of power, I'm not sure this, this teen stories should have should be out in public. So it's interesting here because we can always say how far this thing can go. But one thing for sure, it happened on Parkland Elementary School's watch, including Scott Peterson, who is a who was represented at the time by the Broad Sheriff's Office. So when you look at it, it was under the Broad Sheriff's Office watch as well. So um, sometimes you gotta see a lot what it is, but truth of the matter is, and a lot of folks will use this against Scott Israel, because how many other instances his son may be involved or family members may be involved, we don't know. But there are times when you have children from elected servants believe they can do what they want because their mommy, their daddy is in office. That has happened too. But and that's one thing you gotta really look at. And but the fact is this, regardless on this particular thing, is an issue that happened at Parkland. And of course, it happened to other schools as well. I'll be very frank. The people in the, in the school system is supposed to quote unquote protect kids, but technically, like the police are not obligated to protect us, including school children. That includes Parkland. You have to really, like I said, can't make your own judgment, but to be very frank, it doesn't change my mind that declaring Scott Israel is not my sheriff. He's not, and that man needs to go. This is just one little example. A lot of other stuff happened. Of course, he's a member of Homeland Security, a federalized Uncle Tom, and I say that ethically. He's got to go. No ends or buts. So you make your own judgment on that. If Brett Israel and Mr. Rodick has repented for their actions and they keep it authentic, that's one thing. If they want to disregard it, use it as kicks, it's going to blow back in their faces when least expect it. I'm not wishing them any ill. So enough said. I'm going to do two, uh, there's two stories here. And this one actually, speaking of David Hogg, this came out from um, BPR, which is Biz Pack Review, and it came out yesterday as well. Hog should have done his homework before bullying grocery chain. He just burned all his pals on the left. And it came out yesterday as well by Vivex Saxena. And as it reads here, when David Hogg successfully bullied an employee owned supermarket chain into suspending future contributions to political candidates like Adam Putnam, a proud NRA member running for governor in Florida. He thought he had won. Together we can do anything. Together the young people will win by choosing love. Sounds like a, pole, a mini, mini Pol Pot, I would say, right? I will go on here. The, the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School mass shooting survivor tweeted Friday evening shortly after the public market change cap, capitulated to his demand. There's a Twitter page on that. Hogg and his supporters have spent all Friday afternoon and early evening protests at public stores across the state in an attempt to pressure the largest employee-owned grocery chain to America, in America to stop supporting Putnam. Anyone who supports an NRA sellout is an NRA sellout. That's why I'm calling on everyone to stop shopping at Publix till they pull their endorsement of Putnam publicly, publishing the inaction after Pulse, Stroyser, Douglas, Liberty City. Don't support an NRA sellout. Interesting indeed. Paul out sounds like all those places were um, firearm free zones, right? Absolutely. David Hogg, you guys start doing your homework, Junior. And I will continue on here. As of course said, don't support an NRA sellout. He had tweeted to his followers earlier his in the week. My children, please bow down to me. I have dishpan hands. Damn warm hands, right? And unfortunately, his plan worked. Kind of. We would never, we would never knowingly disappoint our customers or the communities we serve as a result. 
we decided earlier this week to suspend corporate funded political contributions as we reevaluated our grieving our giving processes public Friday. Notice that the store didn't say it was suspending just its political contributions to Putnam. Publix made it clear it would be suspending all of its corporate funded political contributions. All right, there is just one big problem with that. The supermarket chain has a record of also contributing to the left wing political organizations, including the YWCA, which is a member of the Coalition to Stop Gun Violence and which supports same sex marriage. Publix has also previously contributed to the United Way chapters and the Susan G. Komen Foundation both of which are vocal supporters of Planned Parenthood. So all you pro-abortionist freaks should call out David Hogg on this, right? Because David Hogg convinced Publix to pull political funding from the NRA supporting candidate backed out of the funding for the same-sex marriage and abortion advocacy. <laughs> Good one! Campbell Hall, when, you, when you're so woke, when you're so woke, you... Go against the core beliefs of your own party, as Caleb Hall said here. Apparently, extortion can have unintended consequences. In the 80s and 90s, Jesse Jackson had the same results after making extortion threats to various businesses. That's Potter on politics. Thank you, David Hogg. No funding for murderous Planned Parenthood and same sex marriage. Brilliant. Go public. That's NJ Hispanic Deplor. Okay, and, um, According to the campaign finance records maintained by OpenSecrets.org, you can see that link for yourself. Publix chain has also donated to six House Democrats and a whooping 13 Senate Democrats in this election cycle alone, including feminist senators Will Elizabeth Warren and Christine Gillibrand. <laughs> you can look that link up for yourselves, okay? So I'm not making this up. But apparently... These left-wing politicians won't receive Oh, not here. Shoot. It's delayed, man. What the heck? Yeah, I'll do it again. Good grief, man. All right, good grief. All these little delays, these solar flares, these clouds. Yeah, I get a little bit annoyed at times. I got to laugh about it as well. I will continue. Apparently, these left-wing politicians won't be receiving any more, any more, more. All thanks to Little Hog, Whoopsie Daisy. It's called Law of Unintended Consequences, and it's known to sneak up on an arrogant young brat who think they're all that in a bag of and that's what makes me laugh but one thing for sure my friends when you when you look at things like this I just start laughing at these people okay and if any of these folks are you're gonna be shooting yourselves in the foot you should have a, a a poster of F Hitler with a serious salute that says, all in favor of gun control, raise your right hand. You know why? You want to believe people like that mindset wants to put all the security eggs in the hands of the government. And little glam boys like him, and I'll say that, I'll say right from his family too, weak and pathetic stooges that think the world should revolve around them, forget about it. Do yourself a favor. Read the book The Might is Right. Don't come back with talk. The little flowers and vegetable. And public just let them do that. They should have just given for trespassing and the story. Why? Because that was that was the FBI. Who the hell cares? I don't even know him, so I'm not making any judgments towards him. But I say one thing for sure: his actions chose poorly. You're not rebellious enough. And you know what? It's gonna blow back in your face, and it looks like you already did that. You already shot yourself in the foot, Junior. But you're not a you're not a man, you're a little boy. That's how I look at it. So and you can look at the cycles here himself on open secrets. Three hundred and twenty seven thousand eight hundred and sixty seven dollars of contributions, four hundred and seventy thousand dollars lobbying. 
National Republican Congressional Committee, $82,453. AG America, $75,000. Democrat Congressional Campaign Committee, $15,746. Paul Ryan, $11,315. Stephen Scalzi, $10,400. Rooney Francis, $8,100. You can look at all the recipients here as well. You put that link in there. It is very funny, okay? And how they do these things, and you, you got, got, you got, even got guys, you even contribute people to like Link Mario Diaz, Bellart, Don Neal, Scott David from Georgia, John Ossoff, Bill Nelson, four hundred eighty-five dollars for Bill Nelson. So you know, it's just um very intriguing. So good, let them stop all of their uh, some Canova forty-two dollars. So you know what? It's going to be. Oh my God. So all these, people, all these guys, guys got suspended. You know what? That's fine by me. So. It's called blowback. And it will burn you in the rear when least expected. And that is it. I'd like to thank everyone for listening. Plus, feel free to download and share through social media networks. If you got any questions, comments, or you're sending something to interesting, you want to check out. Whatever you do, please send your correspondence with the quorum. You hit me on Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, Tumblr, YouTube, Freedoms Network, Minds.com, FutureNet.club, Patreon.com, forward slash Lucky Luck 3 or 3 Eyes. If you're going to be a donor, that would be great. You can hit me at Gab, G-A-B dot A-I, or yours dot org. I'm hitting other social media sites as well, including Buddy's List, but I haven't really produced anything on there yet. But when I do, you'll be informed. In addition, you can email me at Lucky Luck number 3 at gmail.com or to your Cryptid One special Proton Mail account. Look at luck number 03 at protonmail.com. All right, my friends, once again, thank you for your time. But always remember that the maniac resists the stuff for the soul and can liberate humanity. Until next time, take care of yourselves. Keep on spreading the love, and may your guardian spirits be with you.